Welcome back to the Hank's Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So on Hank Strange, YouTube slash Hank Strange, we have this video up. It's a PSA dagger, 9mm, 5,000 plus rounds. I think we got it in... Where did we get that? Where did we get that thing? We got it at a couple of thousand. Maybe, was it 3,000 rounds or something like that? And uh, we I think it was 32, three. Yeah. I think it was 3,200. Yes. We yeah, have... Like that. How long is this video? This video is an hour and 20 minutes that we have on YouTube. Very detailed. Every single shot. You guys need to check this out. Um... And the whole thing that's happening here, I'll skip forward a little bit so you all could see this. We can't, you know, YouTube is watching us when we're live, so we can't show. We can't show handguns and rifles and things like that, except if we're looking at it on video. So we have pictures and things. I'll share stuff from the website and all that from PSA as we go in here. But we put every round through it. Other guys had it before us. Oh, there's a train passing. <laughs> Don't pay attention. <laughs> pay no attention to the train that's going by right now. Um, <laughs> oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Um, it's like a big, massive train that sounds like going by. It's celebrating the dagger. So we've yeah, been doing. Yeah. Yeah. We've been doing. We've been taking a look at this dagger from. When did you guys announce it at Shot Show? Uh. Two years ago, it's the last shot show, so what was that, 2019? 19? 18. Yeah, I think so. No, wait, yeah. wait, hold on. Yeah. No, it was, it was 2020. Right? No, it was tw yeah, 2020, 2020 was the last one. Yeah, 2021 January. was the one that was skipped. Yeah. When we did so this year was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So, wait, it was 2019 or 2020? I think it was 2019. 2020. It, it's been a year since we came out with it, if you remember. It took us seven months to... Yeah, 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 and it was all crazy. I think you guys announced uh, fifteen hundred new items at that shot show. <laughs> so, lots of cool stuff that I'm sure sure folks are going to ask us about. But we're going to talk about the dagger because um, I had I had folks on the show here. We were talking about it. People said this is never coming out. It's a unicorn. It did come out. It's out there. Are you guys in regular production right now? Yes. Okay. Can we, can we, do we know how many of them are getting produced or? As many parts as we can get a day and it's all going out. <laughs> yeah. Are you, guys, are you guys making everything in house now for the, the whole pistol? Good question. No, Hard we're not much. making everything in house. Okay. You know, it, 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 would be, it would be viable for us to do something like that. I mean, you, you, you have to use other people who's who's accustomed to making parts for these type of things. So we, yeah, so we do the brands, we got the drawings, we let them do it, and then we source those. The, the majority of it um, is, is pretty much outsourced with the exceptions like the barrels, because we, we have a barrel manufacturing facility that can do that. Oh, interesting. I I thought the barrel would have been the one thing that you would have outsourced. I didn't realize you guys were making them. That's cool. We we make a lot of barrels. There's one thing that we're yeah. good at doing right now is making barrels. We're not good at stamping steel parts. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So barrels. That's yes. a, that's a good thing. So mm -hmm. most of your major manufacturers are not going to have every part in house, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to plastic molding and stuff like that. Your frames are mostly done at a few big plastic manufacturers that mm. injection mold stuff so <clears throat> no no need to reinvent the wheel yeah yeah, yeah. well so you kind of use, I mean, that's you kind of let industry expertise handle that stuff for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah by the way before i forget this big shout out to josiah at psa that helped arrange all of this along with lola appreciate lola and josiah mm -hmm. Uh, for, for helping us out here. I don't know if he's out there watching us or listening. Um, and we'll get to all the questions that you guys ha have. Um, uh, I'm, I'm already seeing people like Brian Quick yeah, says, PSA prices uh, don't matter. Nothing is in stock. Is that true, Chad? Because I, 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 I know it's not true, but you're the CEO. So 
our products are selling so quickly. I mean, if, if think of it this way, we wouldn't be having this podcast right now if we didn't exist because we never had anything in stock. Mm -hmm. um, I get people's frustrations. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But there's certain things like we're coming off of one of the worst, it's probably the worst hangovers that we've ever had in the industry with the COVID and all the free money that was handed out and everything. So we prospered. And while we prospered, our customers suffered because we couldn't get everything in stock in an adequate amount of time. We, we could have sold everything we could have made and we wanted to sell everything we, we, you know, we could make. We wanted to be able to make and, and get more. But um, every, every machine, every group, every manufacturer that we used, everybody was completely 100% fully staffed up and being utilized. And then at near the mid to end of the COVID pandemic, the, the staffing become a problem. So we had all the machines, we had all the, the materials, we had everything on process to go forward. And people started going out with COVID. It just, it, it caused a backlash. And that's not us using an excuse. I mean, we had at one point, we had almost 50 people out um, with different illnesses during that, that period of time. Wow. Um, whether they were just at home with their family or they had been exposed or they had it or, or anything, you know, we had, we, we've had, you know, a lot of different, uh, struggles um, during the pandemic. So, yeah, we do have it's, it's starting to become more in stock. We're seeing a little bit of a cool off period. I think the industry's had a little bit of a hangover with the with the COVID situation, and now the customers are starting to have a little bit of a hangover. Schools back in. Um, we're going into the summer slump. What we were um, our plan was to to be in full production on things like the dagger. And of course, the jackal um, during the summer slowdown month, so we'd have new products to entice people to buy. Um, unfortunately, the jackal's not a thing. And Steven's doing a heck of a job getting the dagger out there. If you join the PSA handgun group, you'll see more and more every day dropping, more and more people getting them, you know, getting them in stock. But we just don't have un unlimited capacity to run thousands and thousands and thousands of SKUs and products that. Uh, we just have to pick and choose based on what materials we have at that, that point in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let me get, uh, so here's a counterpoint to that from Gorillas and Guns. He says, I've been getting a lot of stuff uh, from PSA here lately, super fast shipping. I think over um, the, the, the last couple of days, you guys have free shipping on stuff. I know there's always this question about availability, so I just I'll just spend a couple of minutes on it. You know... I think that always happens, right? Especially with the cool things you guys are making. In the beginning, sure. when, you're, when you're making something cool, you don't make like a million of them <laughs> and then sit around and, and wait for everyone to, to buy them. It starts at limited right. capacity, right? How does that work? Well, we're, we're still, a, I mean, we're, we're becoming a major player. We are a major player at this point, I think. But mm -hmm. um, we're still kind of a smaller company. So we can't produce... 15,000 guns and wait on some predetermined drop date to ship them all out so everybody's got them. We consider ourselves a hand-to-mouth company. So as we get part of in, we build guns to order and ship them out. And that's a strategy from our standpoint to keep us healthy. Because some of these companies in the past have had great success during different parts of the, 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 the career you know, profile of that company. They put 15,000, 20,000 guns in stock. And think if we had that, what if we had 30,000 AR-15 sitting in the back warehouse consuming up space and, and causing overhead when the summer slump or something happens? We just, we don't, we don't operate that way. We, we build an order. A lot, of, a lot of times the product that you get was built the day before it ships. Um, yeah. And that's just been our strategy. It's been our strategy to be able to be nimble and see, you know, Jamin has, has got an algorithm in his head that's unparalleled to anybody I've ever seen in this industry. He'll watch sales data and he'll change daily what he's building. If pistols are hot, we're building pistols today. If rifles are hot, we're going to build rifles today. You know, ammo's the thing, we're going to focus on getting more ammo to the back. So um, it, it's just the way we operate. And I know it's very frustrating to consumers um, because it's, it's different. You know, SIG and different companies like that, they'll build thousands and thousands of product and keep it in the warehouse before launch so everybody can get it. Um, I think what we do works for us. It's it's a little bit different. It's Like I say, it can be frustrating. But you look at the hype that goes along with what we're doing. I kind of took that market on the from the manufacturing standpoint and did some of the social media with it. Mm -hmm. You know, we give they drop reminders and we, tell people, we have play little games and things. I mean, mm -hmm. 
we try to make it fun, even though it can be aggravating just the way we do business. But believe me, if I can get a 10,000 every product in, in stock so everybody can get it and be happy, I'd do it tomorrow. It's just that's not the times we live in right now. And I think as we mature, some of that may change. Um, but for the short term, when we have a new product dropped, when we get the parts, we're going to build them and ship them. Yeah. I don't know if people know this, but in my time from looking at the industry, when you look at the distribution model, what I don't like about it is that when cool guns come out, distributors hoard them. (laughs) No one can get their hands on them. Yep. And see, we don't, um, a little, this this aggravates dealers too, and nobody's even brought this up, but we um, sometimes hold dealers from getting the new products because we want the consumers to have them. Mm-hmm. So we'll throttle dealers on certain things like the UAKs or the daggers or whatnot. It, it mm-hmm. frustrates them too, but I, we would like for the consumer <clears throat> to have as many opportunities to get the product firsthand from us than going out on the black market and being put on gun broker and that kind of things. It still happens, but not as frequently as it would, would be. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if you if if you pay attention, as these guys are saying, <clears throat> you can get your hands on stuff. So specifically with the dagger, Walter, how did you get one? Did someone did you have special circumstances that help you get your hand on one? Uh, I, I had no help. I it, it was a Friday. We were I was going up to your place on a Saturday to shoot the, you know, put eighteen hundred rounds through the gun. So I said, this for fun. Let me see if I, if any pop up on Friday. So I started watching about three o'clock and refreshing and watching and refreshing and whatnot. And then a friend came over and I had to help him load up a truck, one of my military trucks. And, and I go back inside. It's about four twenty. Apropos, about four twenty, <laughs> and I and I hit the button and it says it only showed the uh, colored ones out of stock. And I'm like, oh. So I, <laughs> I, I, I hit, well, I can tell you, I'll tell, I'll, tell you about the, they, I'll tell you the story about when the dagger first came out and you'll laugh too. And I hit the button and boom, I had one in my cart. I'd already turned off the uh, screen blocker thing, the ad blocker, which is part of the other story. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm an FFL and everything. So boom, it, boom, boom, boom. And it was done. It was on order. Okay, yeah. And I have it right here. So yeah. When they very first came out, we were all waiting. I was going to buy two of them if I could get my paws on them. Because mm-hmm. Patrick's like, get one for me. Get one for me. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, it's like, yeah. You know? so No, no one was up, thinking about Hank Strange, but go ahead. It's fine. I came up, I put it in the cart, and, uh-huh. my, and my, damn, my, da- my damn ad blocker was on. And it wouldn't let me finish the order. And yeah. then by that time, it was gone. Boom. And I'm like, son of a... Yeah, and, and, and it wasn't it wasn't PSA's fault per se. It was my damn computer's fault. So, you know, um, I was ready the next time. But yeah, yeah. I just happened I just happened onto it on on that Friday before we went to go shoot the gun. So yeah. Um, can can you guys tell us how many are getting made every day? Is this? Um, I mean, if there's inside stuff that we can't talk about for sure, tell us. But is there an average number of how many of the daggers in particular are getting made every day? I think someone asked that. Um, earlier it's not a set number um okay there are so many different things that we work through daily um but several hundred a day go out and when we build them they're gone daily <clears throat> so oh, sometimes okay. there's a there's a there's a lap there's a lap over mm-hmm. um from one day to the next but whenever they go up they sell out instantly um, here lately, it's, it's finally been that little bit of a trickle. Um, you know, we're getting more in. So whenever we load them, we have more in stock. So it takes now instead of five minutes or 28 seconds, like the first day and crash the website, but, you know, yeah, that's we right. have that a boom. couple hundred. Yeah. We have a couple hundred that go out and now it's, it takes five minutes, you know, 20 minutes. Um, but we have so many different things coming out with the dagger and what we want to do with it um, mm-hmm. that I think everybody's starting to see it on the website, you know, that there are things that we're going to do that are going to enable you to build the gun that you want. You know, I AR, the, the frame. yeah, I mean, PSA did it with the AR-15 mm-hmm. and why not do the same thing with a popular platform that there are tons of aftermarket stuff available um, for whatever you want to do. And, uh, you know, you have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. So we can sell you a $300 firearm 
or you can buy, you know, you see the frame, you can buy the, the frame that is fan freaking tastic compared to anything else on the market. And then you can put your whatever barrel, whatever slide you've got, you know, that you want because the aftermarket's just there for it. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, I see that as questions. Uh, Gabriel Dominguez says ETA for optics ready PSA dagger. And I would ask about the different versions. I think, go ahead. That, that oh, that, that's all here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even know that that was, yeah. Is there like an RMR slide version coming out? Yeah, they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Steven? Um, I am, I am in <laughs> testing right now. Yeah. Okay. So we're, it's, it's coming. Okay. The thing, the, also the thing that we that we do here that, you know, we're bringing in and making sure that we do everything right. There's a reason why there was a delay. We wanted to make sure the gun worked with every type of ammunition, whenever, what kind of recoil springs, if we put suppressors on a threaded barrel, if we put lights on the frame, you know, we test thousands, tens, 20, 30,000 rounds on these things to make sure that everything goes out right. Uh, so the same thing with an optics ready version, we're going to test mo all the different platforms that are cut for us and we're going to ensure that they work. Okay. So it's not just get it and then sell it, you know, Hey, let's get it cut. You know, these are our first ones off of production machines. Okay. Now we have some and we have, we're testing. And then as soon as we get more ready and my tests are done, you know, it's it's on the market. And I was going to call you guys amateurs for saying that you shot, you know, 1,800 rounds through a gun. It's like I did 5,000 yesterday. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Flexing on us. Uh, first of all, this is apocalypse. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I don't have 10,000 rounds sitting in my back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> you know how much money we spent on that day? <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Trust me, Patrick yeah. was like, are you serious with this? Yeah, when he told me the number, I was like, I don't feel comfortable with this, but I'll do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. stop it. Stop it. I, I'm not a, I'm not an ammo shy person. I do machine uh -huh. guns. So, you know, it's like we used to shoot a lot of ammo, like nine mm. millimeters, grab by the handfuls and load the mag. But, Back mm, in the good old days. Not, <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.